Welcome to the Money Watch Show. It's Thursday, August 17th, and we are here trying to help you take better steps forward in your financial life. If you've got a question, just go to our website, jillonmoney.com, jillonmoney.com, and click the Contact Us button. While you're there, check out all the cool stuff that lives on that website. I've got a blog, and we've got videos up there, and there's resources, and you've got links to buy my book, The Great Money Reset, and a link to subscribe to our service, Jill on Money Live. That's where you have access to quarterly live webinars and lots of cool bonus content, interviews with interesting journalists or just people that I think are neat and cool. And so check it out. Jill on Money Live costs a whopping 35 bucks and you get a full year ahead of you before Mark jams up the price. He may even go to $36. I don't know. Our next guest is Nate Burleson, Wednesday, September 13th, 7 p.m. We're going to be talking NFL. The guy is a former professional football player. He also loves personal finance, so we're going to have a good chat with Nate. Join us for that, but only if you subscribe to Jill on Money Live. All right, Mark, what's going on for you today? Take a deep breath. It's uh, Thursday, so this is it. This is our kind of our last day before we uh, reunite after Labor Day. I need, I like to talk to you when we're not really talking about work, when I randomly text you like, oh, send me a picture. Like, you'll send me a picture of Theo, and it makes me so happy. You know what I was just telling somebody uh, recently? I, I made the, uh, the admission, and I said, I want to be clear that I don't dislike children, but I really don't like looking at pictures of kids that I don't have a relationship with. So I think that I could look at probably a thousand pictures of Theo because I care about him and I know him, but people who show you random numbers of photos of their children or grandchildren or grand nieces and nephews, guys, nobody cares. Nobody cares about these kids. Just stop doing that. You know who cares? Other people don't care. I mean, I care about other people and I do care about like, you know, like my nieces and nephews and I got a lot of them, but I think it's funny. And this is also why I think it's funny is that uh, I was recently at an event and someone, we took a picture with somebody and they posted it on social. And uh, Jackie says to me, people do that, right? I'm like, yes, it's, it's crazy. Like just have a picture for yourself. You don't have to share it with the whole world. I don't know. I'm definitely not into the sharing so much. Mark, should we get off Twitter? I mean, X now, or do we have to stay on? I mean, you, well, you're off. Essentially, you're off. I mean, you're on, but you're never really on there. So I would just keep it as is. All right. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I guess we don't have to do that other one threads, which is fine with me. All right. Today, we're joined by Joey, who is on the line from Austin, Texas, where they've had a hot, hot, hot summer. Hello, Joey. How are you? Hi, Jill. I'm doing well. You staying cool? You better have good air conditioning if you live in Texas, right? <laughs> we, we actually just had an AC problem, but uh, everything got fixed, so doing well. All right. Tell us what's going on. How can we help you out? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm in my mid-30s uh, with a birthday coming up, and I, I feel like this is right around the time where I should be having my midlife problem. 37 is midlife? I was just going to say, this is more like your three-eighths. Let's not make it midlife. It'll be a longer life than that. When you say mid-30s, give us the actual number. What are you turning? Uh, I'll be turning 37. All right. So what's the quintessential midlife crisis, you think? I've been lucky enough to, to get some money um, from hard work uh, in a great company. And I've never dealt with that large sum uh, before. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been doing a lot of the uh, Reddit financial advising and, and learn-as-you-go process. So I, I had a couple of questions really around that piece in terms of, A, how do I uh, go about finding a financial advisor or planner? Like, yes, I know fiduciary, et cetera. But I don't think we ever really talk about how much we should be paying for those mm -hmm. services. Yes. Um, who we should be looking for in, in that. And then the second piece, which is, I think, a little bit more awkward is, I say awkward because I'm not sure people think about this in midlife crisis, but taking care of my uh, family. So my mother and my father are getting older, my parents uh, in laws uh, also getting older. Uh, and I know that that is something that I want to plan for and something mm -hmm. that I want to people that I want to take care of. Okay, that's very nice. I love that. You're very responsible. How old is your wife? Uh, 33. Okay. And how old are your parents? Uh, they're in their late 60s. So 67, 68. Oh, my God, they're so young. And what about the in laws? 
Uh, younger, younger still. So uh, mid to late fifties. Oh my God. You're ready. I, I only wish that some of my nieces and nephews are worried about taking care of me in my mid to late fifties. Okay. Um, let's talk about the moolah that you've accumulated. So first of all, are you and your wife both working uh, full time? We are. Okay. How much do you guys make? Uh, collectively about 280 a year. Great. Uh, are you both putting money into retirement accounts? We are. Maxing out? Uh, I am. Uh, I believe my wife is close to, but not fully. How much money have you saved so far? Give us a little bit of the breakdown. Uh, I have uh, 25 right now in liquid with another 30 in a CD. Mm-hmm. Um, I have about 150 in a 401k, uh, another 20 in an HSA. And yeah, the the windfall really is around like the 50,000 that just came in from my employer for a, a long-term investment plan. So wait, the 50 is separate than what you've already recounted to me, yes? Correct. Okay, Correct. so 50 is the windfall. All right, what about your wife? I, I don't have most of those numbers. Give me a um, guess. Do, uh, probably uh, more in savings, uh, less in her 401. Okay, but like a couple hundred grand? Yeah. Okay, good. And what about a house? Do you guys own one or are you renting? Uh, own. How much is your house worth? In the middle of the pandemic, uh, numbers were kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I would probably say anywhere from 600 to 700 right now. Do you have a mortgage? Uh, yes. What's the outstanding mortgage amount? Uh, roughly 380. What's the interest rate? 2.5. Not moving. And um, do you guys have kids? We don't. Planning? We're, we're having conversations. <laughs> Mark and I would be happy to decide on this for you. If you want We'd to love it too. If you could do it right now, it'd be That's great. That's fine. Let's, Mark, 33, healthy girl. Let's get her pregnant right now. What do you think? <laughs> I, mean, I, I can endorse one child for sure. Beyond that, I can't speak to. One with an option to get another. Um, all right. So, Joey, are you guys going to continue to make about this much money? Do you have a big trajectory higher, do you think? What, what's your guess? Uh, my guess is higher if we want it to be higher. Uh, what do you I mean if right you want it? Who doesn't want to make more money? Uh, well, it's it's the responsibilities that come with it. Oh. Uh, so bigger job titles, yeah. uh, longer hours, okay. et cetera. Fair enough. Do you guys have Roth options at work or are you just, you're both using traditional? What are you doing? That is probably the financial advisor planner section of the conversation where okay. I'm like, Sure. Like I've heard both of those phrases before. Uh, <laughs> not, those those words sound familiar. I love you, Joey. Thank you for calling me on my baloney. Uh, okay, that's that all makes sense. And you guys have any other debt besides the mortgage? Yeah. So we have about twenty k left on our car loan, um, but that should be probably paid off within the next year or two. What's the wait a second? What's the interest rate on the car loan? I think uh, five or six. Anything else besides the car loan? Uh, student loans. How much? That's that's the big one. So yeah. we we both met in grad school. I have roughly seventy five, mm-hmm. uh, and I think my wife has roughly sixty five to sixty. Do you know how much the interest rate is on those loans? They vary for me. Um, uh-huh. So I have one dating back to undergrad, which was like subsidized at uh, like six percent, five percent. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then in grad school, it kind of ballooned up to about six six point five to seven. Have you paid the tax on the fifty thousand dollar windfall that you received? No, not yet. So there will be some tax due, right? Yes. Okay. Any other obligations that you have besides the parents and the in laws and the debts that you've just outlined? Parents. The parents. Uh, really, I think the bigger thing for me is uh, having an in law suite for my mother. And mm. starting to adjust her restroom and her room to make it a little bit more accessible. Do you have an in-law suite right now? Uh, we do. And so she lives with you? No, no. So my, <laughs> it's a bit awkward. My mother lives with my sister in the same city. Okay. Um, and we just kind of take ownership back and forth. Ownership is definitely the wrong word. I know there. what you mean. Yeah. She moves between the two of her loving children. There we go. Responsibility is shared. Okay. So you have an in-law suite in your current home, right? Correct. Do you need to do something to it to freshen it up? No, it's a, it's a new build. It's just more about making the restroom and her bedroom more accessible. Okay. 
you have to spend some chunk of money to do that or not? Uh, I, I think we would likely will, but nothing major. And, and anything two to soon five. or not? No, no. I don't okay. think anything pressing is necessary. Okay. Is there anything else that we should know about? No, uh, I think that's it. Oh, well, I'm sorry. One more question. Joey, every single month you put money into your retirement accounts. Do you have extra money on a monthly basis or is it sort of ad hoc? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Uh, definitely ad hoc. Usually whenever we get paid, uh, our bonuses is when I'll throw a little bit more in. Okay. Got it. Mark, we have a $50,000 windfall. Okay. We're looking at a balance sheet that needs some attention. And here's what I mean by that, Joey. With the first you know, moments where we were going through all the money, I was very excited. And then we got to the car loan and the student loans and the interest rates associated with that. So Mark, what should the windfall be applied to once we pay the tax on it or set aside the tax money for it? I think they're doing what they need to be doing aside from this. They're, they, you know, they're both contributing to their retirement plans at work, which is great. So that's good. We just got to get rid of the student loans first and foremost, I think. I, I wouldn't be too concerned. I mean, you have the car loan, but it's going to take care of itself. He said it's going to be gone in a year or so. So I'm not too concerned about that. I think student loans, but they're not going to be able to, obviously, they're not going to get rid of all of it. No, but it's interesting. You said six and a half to 7%. There, there's some chunk that's six and a half to 7%, right? Correct. So I'm thinking unless there's some, I mean, the liquidity, you have $25,000 liquid, 30000 in a CD, and then this windfall on top of it. Keep a little, I don't know, throw five grand into your liquid savings just so you have some extra money to pay the tax that's due on that windfall. I think we should be looking at that windfall as a way to reduce the student loans. Anything above six and a half percent is what I would pay off. You know, if you've got way more than the windfall will cover, it won't matter. It'll just put a big, it'll really knock that down in a much more, just, I think it'll be easier for you to absorb the new payment. So your your October 1st is when we're restarting. So I might use that windfall sooner rather than later, like in September to knock it all down. And then they can, maybe you can see where you stand. You're going to have to budget in the fact that these student loans are starting up again. It's going to get tight for you guys. Now, let's talk about a financial advisor. Right now, for you guys, you have most of your money in retirement accounts, right? And so the question is, what kind of financial advice do you think you need? And we just talked through a bunch of things. I believe that you guys are in a very good place to begin the planning process. Now, the beginning part of this process is pretty much going to be what Mark and I just walked you through because it's about doing all this work. So before you even start the process, what I'd love for you to do is you'll gather up documents like you'll say to your wife, let me have your 401k statement. Let's look. Do we have a Roth option at work or not? They're going to ask you all these questions. Now, the next question I ask Mark is, what type of investment advisor slash financial planner should Joey and his wife be talking to? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what a comfort level is in doing this. I mean, most like you just said, almost all their investment investment direction right now is through work. I don't know if it's worth going out and hiring a financial advisor to tell you what to invest in through your 401k. I mean, you know, we can, <laughs> we can even help you with that. Or a lot of times these workplace plans provide access to people who can point you in the right direction. That's the other thing I would find out. Like, do you work for a big company, Joey? I do. Who's the plan through? Uh, Fidelity. Okay. So here's what I think you might want to think about doing. You work for a big company that has lots of benefits. You should check to see whether they have any planning benefits that are available to you. You may or you may not. The thing that's weird is it's going to be very difficult for you to plan to take care of your parents and your in-laws as you are also paying down your student loans. So what I think is going to ultimately be your course of action, it may be that you don't need a financial plan. It may be that you just want to, you know, and you and your wife should be doing this, you know, in tandem, right? You can't have such separate lives. You got to know what's going on for one another that you are going to have to have a game plan where you say, all right, the student loans right now we have, you know, well, 140, let's say that we pay down 
let's say you end up with like uh, $110,000 of student loans. So the first thing that's going to happen is that any extra money that you have, that one to 1000 2000 a month, or whenever you get a bonus, you're going to pay down big chunks of your student loans because six, six and a half, seven percent interest is a lot. And so you're going to want to focus on paying those down. Mark's right. The car loan will get paid down also, but all of your free cash flow right now should be paying down debt. And you kind of are in this position where once you pay that down, again, maybe you get another $50,000 windfall in two years, who knows? But all that extra cash flow, once it gets paid down, is going to have to go someplace where it's accessible to you. It cannot be only in retirement accounts. So once we get the debt paid down, the next level is you're going to create a brokerage account. And you can do you can open up a brokerage account wherever you want, you know, since you're since your retirement plan is at Fidelity through work, maybe you do it at Fidelity. Maybe you use Fidelity to help you with your financial planning, or maybe you get some sort of advisory service that's kind of a cheaper service than getting a full-time financial planner. The thing that's weird about you, Joey, is that you make a lot of money, you have a bunch of money, but because all that money is in retirement accounts, no financial planner is going to be like, yeah, you can pay me to manage that because they can't really get paid to do it. So that leaves you with, well, then I have to pay someone to just do a financial plan for me, which you could do, but it's going to cost you a couple thousand dollars. And that plan may be exactly what we just told you to do. I think that you should check out your plan through work and see if there's there's any way to get some financial advice there. But I got to tell you something. You may be having a three-eighths life financial, uh, I'm sorry, you may be having a three-eighths life midlife crisis, <laughs> you know, but you're not in crisis. You're in great shape. We have to knock down these student loans. We have to knock down the car loan, and then you're going to start using all the money that you've been putting towards that debt. You're going to be putting that money into a brokerage account to help your parents and your in-laws. That's how this is going to go down. And you can pay someone a bunch of money to do that, but I can almost guarantee that fact. Now, one other question. Do you guys have your estate documents done? Do you have life insurance? Have you done any of that end-of-life planning? We have, we both have life insurance. Um, in terms of the actual documentation, we don't have that. You got to do that. That you have to do. And in most of your stuff is going to pass by contract and you're married, so it's not that big a deal, but I think you should do that. And when your parents are moving in, like if your mom is moving to you, does your mom, do your in-laws, do they have their stuff buckled up? Uh, definitely not. We we come from very humble beginnings, so uh, this this definitely isn't part of our like family understanding or knowledge that's passed down. The reason why I say that is that if I look at like your parents, they're in their late sixties. They're between you and your sister, but you know when they're traveling and they're doing stuff, like if something bad happened to your mother or father, like there has to be a document in place for them. And that's not about like oh I'm passing along my my vast fortunes, more like, hey, what do you want? You have to have the conversation. It's very hard to have that conversation. But, you know, you have to have the conversation because it's scary, but it's worse if there's nothing in place. Absolutely. I get that you want to be responsible. I get that you want to make sure you're taking care, but you're going to have to take care of this debt first. There's nothing to do besides paying down that debt that's more important. Again, do you think that there is a, a possibility that there is another windfall in your future? Yeah, yeah. So, um, as part of our company, we have bonuses, merit increases. Uh, I was recently promoted, so that the funds are are going to be there. It's more about the long term investment. So, we have RSUs um, that will likely uh, help out. So, definitely think we can take larger chunks out. If you have an opportunity, if you got you know, um, these share plans and they become vested and you can sell it, you pay the tax. And the first thing you should think of is, all right, have I paid down all this debt? As soon as that question is answered, if the answer is yes, I think that's when you might want to start thinking about, well, what's next, you know? And I think that if you had somebody in your life doing this kind of work with you, they would basically say, all right, well, the next thing is that, you know, we're putting a lot of money into your retirement accounts. That's great. The next step is a brokerage account because the brokerage account is money that will be available to help with your parents and your in-laws. And that's the reason why. 
but the debt is really first. This is not cheap debt. This is the real deal. So we got to get rid of that. And we have to make sure that you guys are still contributing to retirement while you're paying down your debt. And then it's the parents and then they come next. But I think that given what you've told us, I feel much better about the debt because I think you're going to get a chance to really get rid of it in the next, uh, I don't know, few years probably. I think so. Yeah. Um, that's the plan at least. If anybody else has a question around priorities, whether it's debt, whether it's helping your parents out, this is a very common issue that all of us are confronting. It is how do we juggle our current financial situation with obligations? It could be your kids. It could be your aging parents. It could be siblings. And, you know, I was just talking recently with somebody who is doing this with an adult child who is just not quite on her feet yet. And so there is some balancing of making choices around, you know, which, you know, which of your kids needs is going to need help when you have these conversations about estate planning. So all of these are things that Mark and I are very well versed in. If you have a question, just go to JillOnMoney.com, click the contact us button, and we will get your note. If you'd like to come on the air, just check that box. And uh, everything lives on our website. All of our content is right there at jillonmoney.com. You should check it out. Mark Talercio is the co-host and executive producer, as well as the web king. We are distributed by Paramount Global. We drop our episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Don't forget to leave us a rating and review wherever you listen. Lift someone up. Change your work. Change your wealth. Change your life. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next week. 